Hello, everybody. Welcome to The Political Vigilante. My name is Graham Elwood. I'm here with Patreon supporter of The Natural Progressive. Uh, hello, Chris Lund. How you doing? Good. How are you? I'm excellent. I'm excellent. Thank you so much for uh, supporting the show. And uh, I know you kind of found this through, I think, Jimmy Dore, TYT, or something like that? Absolutely, Jimmy Dore. I was just watching him before, <laughs> while I was waiting for you. <laughs> awesome, awesome. <laughs> Uh, well, okay, you uh, you live in Utah, and you really want to talk about the what's going on in Bears Ears. Apparently, uh, there's two bills, one that sounds like very pro-Trump uh, mining, and the other one was just introduced, it sounds like, by a coalition of Native Americans who are trying to stop it. So why don't you tell everybody uh, these these what these bills are, their num the, the, the name of the bills, the numbers are forever, and we can kind of get into the specifics of them. Okay, there's the um, the bill, the 4532, that has three co-sponsors. That's pretty much the bill introduced um, by the people from Utah, the, the government, the politicians in Utah. Um, and there, that is, oh shoot, I didn't, I didn't write down the name of that bill, I'm sorry. It's just a bad bill. It's right. terrible. Let's call it that, the bad, terrible, horrible act. Um, and then there's the 4518 that's called the, let's see, Bears Ears Expansion Act, I believe. And um, both, both of the parties in this discussion have stated over and over that they want this, this, Legislated instead of done by a stroke of the pen, um, and they said that both part, both sides have said that the whole entire time. They just couldn't agree, and that's why it never happened. Um, so after Trump's move <clears throat> with his stroke of the pen, um, our government, mostly Gary Herbert, wants to legislate it and and Gary Herbert um, is the he's the governor of Utah I'm sorry yes he is the government governor of Utah and I'm assuming he's a Republican oh yeah it would be hard you're hard pressed to find a Democrat yeah. here yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> or anything else for that matter but yeah so he is the one that um, it pretty much introduced it in the hearing they had uh, Thursday this is like brand new. This is just happening right now. Um, both the bills are introduced about the same time. Real quick, Excuse what's the name really of your dog? Out out there. Um, but they they gave a hearing to the forty five thirty two really really quickly, and and um, Sean Chapuz, who is representing all the, the the five Native American tribes that are pushing for the the forty five eighteen bill, um, the expansion act. Um, Let's just give some people watching um, a little back uh, story on this. I have done a video on this, but to bring people up to date, it's not necessarily oil that's there. It's uranium. Isn't that the main thing that, that, is a, that they're really trying to get after for the mining? I believe so. They will deny it mm -hmm. up and down one side and another, but they, they hide it. The BLM um, – offers leases and you did the story on the leases that they they just auction off on the on the internet for all these things but we know Zinke talked to talked to uranium one before he came out to visit utah and the bears ears national monument um and there is uranium out there so we have that issue and also we know that the utah just doesn't care and and there are oil coal gas, natural gas, like mm -hmm. resources being just taken up all over the place, right outside of the most beautiful country you could ever imagine. And it, it makes me sick because I drive through a lot of it with my job. And I see the destruction, the strip mining. They're trying to do a tar sands um, wow. strip mine up by Vernal, Utah. And I drive by there all the time. It's so, it's just. So you've, uh, there's already, there's like already strip mining and stuff like that that you've seen that was already happening in Utah? And they're, they're trying to fight the tar sands, which would, I think would be the first in the, in, they said it would be the first in the U.S., the first tar sands, according to the website I was reading yesterday. So, so that, that was kind of new. You were telling me uh, before we started recording that one of these bills, it's probably 4532, is actually linked to the Koch brothers. Is that correct? 
I, I think it is just because, okay, yeah, this is the part that your, your viewers are, are missing. Um, there is a group that was just put together, a nonprofit organization that was called the Stewards of San Juan County um, that was working with the Sutherland Institute, which is funded by the Koch brothers. <laughs> Sorry about that. Where did you slip? Um, no, anyway. the Cox. It's okay. You can call that what they are. They're definitely a bunch of cocks. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I call them that all the time. It makes my mom so mad because she's kind of a Republican. Um, anyway. <laughs> um, yeah, so I think they're involved in this whole thing. And the, I think they're they're paying off tribal members. They find a weak-minded tribal member and manipulate them and get them to speak, which is exactly what they did during this hearing that happened Thursday. They had um, a gal, Suzette Morris. Um, she's she's supposedly the leader of this stewards of San Juan County. She's um, a Navajo and lives out by there, about 45 minutes away from the Bears Ears um, monument it's not that anymore it's been divided into two different ones um i write that down there's uh yeah there's something creek <laughs> i don't know anyway they, they divide it into two smaller ones that are two separate ones and she is speaking out against um the, the big monument and and pro this new bill that that is being brought to Congress. And she doesn't seem to know anything. And one of the questions that they asked her was, um, do you know who's going to be put on the seven member council that would pretty much make the decisions for these monuments? And, and she said, well, the people will put these seven members in place. And if you go and read the bill, it says that it would be the president and do you really want Trump to pick the, even though four members would be from the tribe, there would be, and three members would be outside the tribe, com commissioners and such. I'm like, this is, this is where it gets really crazy. One of the commissioners that was um, pushing for, to, to grab that land from the federal government before it became a monument, and, and he did a protest ride of ATVs up through that, that area, pretty much against the law and he got arrested and went to jail and everything but he's one of the commissioners there and that area is so gerrymandered that there was a court case um and and the native americans went up against him because the native americans weren't properly represented in that area um because of the gerrymandering right. so they actually won the court case so they have to redistrict it so mm -hmm. That's how crazy that place is. And there's one Native American that's a uh, commissioner down there. And they always have her speaking on, on television about it. And <clears throat> she she is so pro, you know, this development and stuff. She's the, the, for this. The so part. she works for this, this uh, Sunderland group that's funded by the Koch brothers. Or she's... I don't think... I, I think she's involved somehow because of how pro... Um, Pro cutting this monument down or against the monument in its entirety, the original monument. Um, it just doesn't sound like uh, she's really for for preserving it. Um, it's not, it's not surprising because this is really how sophisticated uh, the corporate state is becoming. They are creating these so-called uh, non-for-profits and charitable organizations or whatever, and they'll get a couple of people who, you know, aren't, oh, just don't, you know, get somebody that isn't a white male, and it'll seem like it's less threatening, and their people are either uh, misled or they're just outright taking the money or something like that, or they're justifying it in their head. That's the thing how they, they've learned is they buy people. You know, they buy people off. You know, I was right. talking to somebody that used to work uh, in the Pentagon, and you know, they left because it's pretty easy that you know she, they were telling me they got friends who just then take jobs with, with Boeing and the defense industry, and then they they say they're making crazy money, and they say, well, I'm doing it to protect the soldiers of America and this, that, and the other thing. So it's sort of easy when those big paychecks roll in to, eat, to rationalize it in your own head. So 
Um, mm-hmm. I'm not. I'm not surprised that this is a t- the tactic that the Koch brothers are using. Um, Me neither. <laughs> I mean, this is this is in their wheelhouse. But I want to talk a little bit more about um, the coalition for the other bill, the 4518, that is trying to preserve bears ears. And, and how are they going about it? And you were showing me some video footage of some of these hearings. And, and uh, like, how is that battle playing out? I mean, what, where, where's this, what's the current status of it? They're not getting hearings, even though they have 98 co-sponsors and this bill that Herbert's pushing, the 4532, only has three co-sponsors. The one with 98 is not getting hearings. Um, <laughs> That's that's ridiculous. It's absolutely ridiculous. But so what is I the, don't. I'm sorry. sorry. What is the timeline on this? Just in case that there's anybody here watching that lives in Utah that can try to petition lawmakers. Um, what, what what is the timeline on these hearings and who would they contact? Oh man! Right now, I would be hammering Governor um, Herbert and. Um, it's happening right now. I mean, they're having these hearings right now, except for they're not having the, the hearings on the 4532, which is the one brought by the five tribes. So I would be hammering saying 4532, we want to hear that one. Let's hold off on 4518. People are obviously not educated about what that will do. Wait, wait, wait. I, thought they have the, to- I thought it was the reverse. I thought 4518 was the one from the tribes and 4532 was the... Oh, yeah, you're right. I'm sorry. Yes, you're right. 4518 is the Expansion Act, which wants to bring the monument back to its original size to be um, the smallest to cover all the the ancient ruins there, which is crazy. A lot of the argument that you hear here in Utah is that the locals don't want the, the big monument and they don't want it um, under federal control. And... I think that's mostly because they don't understand what the what what it's actually doing. They're being told that they're not going to be able to graze on it, you know, their cattle. They're not, and a lot of them are ranchers out there. So um, they're being told that they won't be able to gather wood, gather their medicinal herbs and stuff from the from that area. And if you go, and I did go and, and read the proclamation Obama wrote, the original one, and it, it's, it preserves all those rights. But the biggest argument that, that they're saying is the wood and then the access, which is really crazy because they argue that on both sides of the coin. And they're saying that they want to access it, but they don't want other people to access it. They want the roads to remain there because part of the, the monument wants to, to you know, minimize the roads and trails and, and cut it off for, you know, AT, certain trails or ATVs and, and certain trails you can just walk in or ride horses or whatever, which I totally agree with. And, and I, I think they should minimize, you know, the motor vehicles going in there. Um, being a person who rides horses up in the mountains, I like to be up there where it's quiet and you don't have to hear the motorized sounds. I don't want to see all the trails, you know, dug up with the tires and all that. I just like to ride in silence and enjoy it. So, um, I, I think that's a, that's not a bad thing, but in the proclamation, it says that they'll still be able to gather wood. They'll still be able to use it for all the purposes they're using it for. Now it will just be more protected. They'll cut down on the roads, um, which is, they argue that both ways. They, they say they don't want more people in there, so if you have more roads, there's more access, but then they say they want to keep the roads, so if they keep the roads, there's more access. So I don't understand their point there. I'll tell you what that point is. I'll tell you what they're trying to do, because I've seen this happen before with other things. They're trying to deliberately confuse it mm-hmm. so that they split the vote, because if it's very clear-cut, Mm-hmm. 4518 preserves it. You can still go in there and have access, and 4532 opens it up to mining. If it's that clear, then they'll lose. So mm-hmm. you have to say, I mean, this is a, I'll give you a fine, I mean, this is the, uh, it might seem like way too off base, but I found it to be similar. When I was in college in the University of Arizona, they were still debating in Arizona about Martin Luther King Day. So they split. They made, they put two ballot measures. They didn't just have one. Yes, we're gonna have Martin Luther King Day, vote for it, yes or no. They had two ballot measures and they deliberately split the vote. So they said, oh, there are not enough people. So this is my guess is the 
Uh, 4532 is, 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 is in favor of the mining and the extraction of natural resources, and there's no two ways about it. So then they're going to sell that to a primarily uh, conservative constituency as Obama wouldn't let you get wood and, and hunt and too much de democratic regulation. Um, so then we're going we're gonna to get rid of all that crazy liberal regulation so you can be free to do live your life without the government telling you what to do uh, so mm -hmm. people will vote for it. Um, right? Yeah, yeah, I, I totally agree with that. So that, I know they're trying to confuse it and they're, they're not telling these people the, the truth though. With, they're saying they, they mention the Blonte. government isn't telling people the truth. That's a that's like that's oh I know oh, ridiculous Utah freaking government telling people the truth. That's unheard of. <laughs> that doesn't happen here. You have to find out any other way, but but freaking on the news to find out the truth about anything. It's insane. But well, let me this was really an eye opener. This hearing, you should watch the whole thing. It's really well, wow. Can you do me a favor? Um, uh, email me the link to this hearing and I'll put it in the show notes for everybody watching and then sure. any other uh, for especially especially for people living in Utah that have a say in this if there's any uh, the link to the reading and both of the bills so people can read them all the way through because keeping us to yeah, I'm find those. I haven't even had a chance to do that yet so okay. I'll try to find those yeah because because if you can get those because I want people to see, even if you don't live in Utah, but because if you don't live in Utah, you should pay attention to this because they're going to do this in your state if they're not already. And mm -hmm. uh, if you live in Utah, you absolutely need to do this. And they want us to not read the bills. They want us to just watch right. some ad or hear some pundit on the corporate media and just mm -hmm. go, oh, the, uh, Obama wouldn't let me hunt there, so now I can. Now I can. Like they want you to think that way. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. And then you don't have facts to fight with, you know, if you're on the other side, if you don't read the bill. So I think everyone should read it. But there's one more interesting thing you have to hear this because it's so crazy. Um, there's this, and it has to do with San Juan County, um, the steward of San, San Juan County. There is this, the person that began it, um, Lyman, he stated, this is just kind of tells you where they're coming from. They're not for the Native Americans. Hold on. Another page of notes. Um, he stated that the Native Americans lost the war, so they have no say in it. That's the kind of person that's running this, this stewards of San Juan County that are, are up there fighting for this bill to cement in Trump's reduction of the monument. So Yeah, it's also just uh it's so it's not even legally accurate because uh Native American reservations are sovereign land. So they basically are their right. own country and they can they can do what they want with their country. Um, you would think that but Utah doesn't recognize it. I mean they they bragged um years ago when the Native Americans here were trying to put a casino in so they would have some means of, of making money on the reservations because of course it's not land that they can do anything else with. And they bragged that they stopped that. That they don't they wouldn't allow them to have the casinos here. So that's the that's the way they are and they, and they just take over they've allowed illegal settlements up by um vernal into shane county um and just do not recognize the rights of the trees and that's one thing if you watch that whole hearing you'll hear chapoose talk about that and i mean i've known they've done that forever because i'm here and and i i'm related to the native american I, my grandmother was half um cherokee so and that's the side I've always related to, even though it was absorbed by the Mormon crap, which uh, <laughs> I'm fighting against constantly. But uh, they just need to fight for their rights because, and we all need to, we need to fight for the Native Americans. They were here first. And, and all they've done is is mess them up. The Chapoos, found, like their ancestry, used to live in the Bears Ears area. They were forcefully removed and put up into the Deshane area. And all their ancestors and all the artifacts of their ancestors are still in the Bears Ears area. And that's one reason, this is one thing I really wanted to point out, because a lot of the 
the argument is all the Native American tribes that are fighting it, most of them don't live in Utah or, or near that area. A lot of them live in Utah, but most of them don't live in that area. But it doesn't matter because a lot of them came from that area. It wasn't... Um, wasn't them who voluntarily left that area and all their native native artifacts and and burial grounds and all that are still there and they don't want that destroyed and every single area that they had covered in the original monument has those items there that's why they need the whole area and they say well that's too big it's bigger than this the road say rhode island or something and you know the size doesn't matter it's what you're protecting it, it's not the size. It doesn't matter if it's the size of half the country. If it's something we have to preserve, we have to preserve it for everybody to be able to learn from it and to to just see it. When you know, my kids, my uh, well, my kids aren't going to have grandkids uh, anyway. I hope. <laughs> anyway, go ahead. Sorry. Well, I didn't no, mean to go off. No, it's a it's a valid point, and it's something that that when people say, oh, it's just a Native American issue. It's like, well, first of all. If someone said, I'm going to build a pipeline through your uh, Christian church and cemetery, right? We're going to dig up right. your your Christian ans- your white Christian ancestors in the cemetery because, you know, it's progress or there's minerals under there, or there's oil under there, or we just want to send a pipeline. Those people would be like, no way. And mm-hmm. then also, and I've said this numerous times when I've talked about uh, Dakota Access Pipeline and Keystone Pipeline, is... You know, contaminated water is not just a Native American. It's not an indigenous person's issue. It's a human issue. Everyone everyone downstream. It's everybody, right? We don't, I don't, did did, 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 did just, the oil people and conservatives not know that you, without drinkable water, the human race die? I I don't, like, I don't under, like, do you, if you're like, ah, you hippies, then go drink some oil. Go buy some quart of oil well, and just drink yeah. that and see how it tastes. Um, so it, it's yeah, really- I fight with my family all the time. I'm like the lone progressive. <laughs> so. It doesn't make sense to me. And it's like almost like people until there's like a contaminated water. I mean, go, you know, have them go visit Flint, Michigan. Mm-hmm. You know, and drink that tap water and then tell me uh, this is only a liberal issue or a native issue or a whatever issue. And it's like, I, I don't I, I don't get it. But um, so we're we're just about out of time. Is there anything else you want to bring up here, Chris, before we what's your? I asked this before. What's your dog's name? Because I see this beautiful dog sitting here. What's your dog? That's Cash. Hey, hey, Cash. Cash. What's up, Cash? Hey, Cash. <laughs> yeah, he's my cutie. We have four old dogs, old fart dogs. But anyway, um, I have so many notes here. It take me forever. I'm sure we'll have another chance. I really wanted to talk about Hatch and the conversation I had with his office. Well, I want to. Well, how was what was this? What was this conversation? Let's see if we can get into this quickly. But like, okay, I have, it was right after the town hall and it was about the tax bill i i tried to ask a question during the town hall and i couldn't so they said if you don't get your question answered well they said they ran out of time and basically i asked um why the 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 tax cuts for the corporations expired while the individual tax cuts wait opposite (laughs) sorry the tax rates for the individuals expired while the tax rates for the corporations were permanent, right, for the tax cuts. And um, so they, they wouldn't answer my question on the town hall. I left a message, and I was super, super polite. So thank you for having this town hall and giving us this opportunity to hear you. Because if you're not, they're not going to call you back. It took about a week, and he called me back, not Hatch, but his representative called me back and we talked for like 20 minutes um i asked him so many questions about that and one of the the biggest thing you know most of it was regular talking points but i asked him why not have a have some kind of uh a thing in the bill saying that they have to spend their money in a certain way that will actually help the economy and not just give it to you know to their executives and the 
pay out dividends and all that stuff that they generally do. Um, and they and they said, well, we don't want to tell corporations how to spend their money. <laughs> like, Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? And I'm like, well, why? It's pretty much America's money. It's tax money that you're you're giving them for free. And they're like, no, we just can't tell corporations how to spend their money. And and then the other thing was I brought up, well, you know, they're just going to use it to automate more because that will be cheaper in the long run if they can automate more. And they are so, I mean, I know they're not that stupid. They just think I am, I guess. They said, no, that's not going to happen. They're not going to automate. <laughs> that's a long ways down the road. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's like, oh, NAFTA will be good. NAFTA won't ship jobs out of this country. NAFTA will be great. But right? The pipelines won't well, leak. They'll be fine. The pipelines won't leak. You'll be fine. You'll be fine. Well, that's fantastic. And I, I look, uh, look, Chris, I applaud you for taking such an active role in your local government. This is one of the things I talk about a lot on this show. And I think, you know, you're a, you're a testament uh, to what I think everyone should be doing on the local level. And I applaud you even, you know, to anyone who's thinking about, like, maybe hasn't gotten that involved in their local government, get involved. And no, you're going to get a bunch of nonsense and blocks and whatever, but you start making your voice heard enough. What they were hoping was that people wouldn't pay attention and not and not go to town halls and not call them. Because they're, they're as they said, we're beholden to the corporations. We can't tell corporations yep. what to do. They own us. Well, this is when you start voting people out. This is when you start primarying people and getting them out of there. And... Uh, Josh I think, is retiring, so I think it's because he, he finally got his ultimate deal, you know, the tax cuts for to the corporations, he's done. Yep. See, he, he didn't know until that happened, and he knows, I'm yeah. done. They probably, <laughs> here's, your, here's your private jet, thanks for helping us out, or whatever. Right, exactly. So, um, I think that's really great and uh, uh, that you did it. And again, folks, we'll put uh, the links to everything below that you can get more information, especially if you live in uh, Utah, on how you can uh, participate right now today on trying give to them hell. give them hell. Make phone calls. If, that's the only, if you can't get out there and protest, because there are protests going on, make phone calls. Call them. Call them out. The more people that do that, they're going to get sick of it eventually if you just don't stop. You have to just keep bugging them. Every single person that has a concern needs to call them. And make call it clear. Fire. Here's the thing you make clear. I, I say this when I call, like, when I've called Diane Feinstein's office and stuff like that. I say, I'm going to vote you out. I'm going to vote against you. You tell them that. And uh, I, they, they tend to wake up. So, uh, Chris, thank you so much for uh, supporting the show and uh, welcome to this wonderful world of uh, political vigilantes. And uh, <laughs> we'll, uh, we'll and we're talking you. next month, right? Yes, yes. Unions. I'm at the verge of settling my third federal case with a worldwide company. So I can talk a little bit more about it then. Great. We'll get into unions next month. That's awesome. And I'm sure we'll see you at the uh, the Super Chats. We're starting to do them uh, oh, yeah. on Saturdays now. And so we're going to make Gotham and Utah great again. Make Utah great. <laughs>